This video is for those that served at NKP Thailand during the Vietnam War. During the war, the United States established several bases in Thailand. The southernmost base was Utapau, south of Bangkok. Udorn was 40 miles south of Vientiane, Laos. Tak Lee was north of Bangkok. Karat was 121 miles southwest of Tak Lee. 188 miles due west of Karat was Uban. West of Udorn was NKP, Nakhon Phanom, which was only 75 miles from the North Vietnamese border. Here's some bases in Vietnam I've included as a reference. Tan Sanut near Saigon. Phan Rang, Pleiku, the border in the DMZ. In this video, we're going to explore NKP. And before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge that most of the photos that were used in this video were taken by folks that were stationed at NKP between 1962 and 1976 and are contained in the Nakhon Phanom RTAFB Thailand uh, Facebook group, uh, which I am a member of. This video is a time lapse from 2010 to 2020 using Google Earth historical imagery and shows how the jungle has reclaimed everything except for the airfield. Well, here's a photo taken in the early 60s showing the jungle being cleared for the runway. And judging by the shadows, it appears to be looking from north to south. It wasn't long before the base started coming together. As you can see in this photo, the south end of the runway. Note that the uh, roads are still dirt. Over the years, my memory has faded to the point where I can't remember how the base was laid out, uh, where the chow hall was, uh, the post office, the outdoor theater, or even the hospital. So I thought, you know, I should reconstruct this base in 3D using SketchUp and Google Earth and photos and movies and anything else I could find. You know, so here's the end result. Uh, you can see, though, that I don't have the bomb dump and most of the stuff on the uh, north side of the base done yet. Okay, so just how big was NKP? From the outside edge of the east perimeter to the outside edge of the west perimeter was 1.219 miles. From the outside edge of the north perimeter to the outside edge of the south perimeter was 3.28 miles. The elevation of the base changed from northeast to southwest predominantly. The rectangles you see are sewage lagoons that were at the lowest point of the base. So guard duty in that tower was not a very pleasant experience. I did several nights as an augmentee uh, performing guard duty. One night was in that tower just to the east. I didn't know what the guys at guard mount meant by guarding the officer swimming pool until I got there. By the time the base closed in 1976, it was essentially a small town with its own power generation station, water supply, and sewer system. Here are the aircraft that operated out of NKP over the years. You know, it's incredible the types of missions and the number of missions these aircraft flew during the Vietnam War. Several of them were shot down, and uh, several pilots were killed. It's also incredible how the maintenance folks could keep these aircraft running and flying at such a remote location. When I was there, we worked six days a week with one day off. I'll point out the features of the base, and then we'll do a walkthrough later on. Hospital. USO. Chow Hall, BX Complex, Bowling Alley, Gym, Post Office, Indoor Theater, Outdoor Theater, AFTN, Officers Club, Security Police Complex. Oh yes, we even had a swimming pool. Well, let's imagine we had a drone back then. Let's just do a quick flyover of the base. Well, directly in front of us is the 56 Combat Support Group Headquarters Building. 
So we'll fly from south to north and then we'll turn around and go back the other direction. Notice the white rectangles and squares are buildings that I still need to put in. I see the TFA complex, and the weather radar tower. Power generation was the rectangular building, and then you see the water tower. Hospital, chow hall, tennis courts, chapel. The outdoor theater, invert with the towers, officers club and trailers. We'll fly over to the southwest corner and spin around and take a look at the base from an opposite direction. Camp Tarbox is the buildings closest to the perimeter. Coming up on the gym, the post office, which is... And we'll go to the TFA complex and then spin around and take a look at the base from an opposite direction. Well, let's walk around, starting about the same place the drone flight started. We're on the main road of the base and uh, invert the baseball field off to the west. And we're going to head to the north on the main road, up by the security police hooches. Uh, looking out that way is where the chow hall and the rest of the base is. There's a FTN, uh, the water tower back over there. I see Rapcon out there. And looking back the way we came towards the main gate. We'll move a little farther north. There's Rapcon again, the tower. There's the A1E on static display out by the uh, supply complex. We'll go down this little road uh, towards the Mars station and the uh, hospital. So on top of this ridge, you could look out and see the whole base. I see the gym, the big building back over there. There's the chow hall. Uh, there's the outdoor theater. Uh, it's SP hooches, comm squadron hooches too, I think. And we're going to go to the curved road that goes next to the hospital. And these two-story barracks just looked amazing. Okay, so looking back over the base again, you can see the chow hall back over there. We're going to continue on down this curve to the USO. Now this is probably one of the most photographed things on the base. Each little sign has the name of the city and the mileage to the city. We'll just do another 360. There's some hooches just looking around to, uh, outside the USO just to see what else is up there. There's those fancy barracks again. Uh, TFA is back over there. And we'll take off and go down this road uh, towards the hooches towards the west. Another look around to uh, you know see where we just came from, the USO over there in the hill. Now this is the road that goes towards the gym and the uh, post office. We'll zoom up to the gym. And then we'll turn around and look to see where we just came from. The post office sat on a hill just across from the gym. There's the uh, chow hall back over that way. So let's go check the mail. The mailboxes were on the outside of the building underneath the eave of the roof. There's a little shop where you can get boots and shoes or get them fixed. Uh, there's the trailers up there, hooches. Uh, here's the BX complex, uh, the road that contained all of the BX stuff. Look back at the post office and the gym, hooches. Take this road to the east. That's the new chapel. And uh, pan around, there's the tennis courts, the chow hall back behind the tennis courts, another tennis court, the airman's club. Here's the indoor theater, the old club up on top of the hill, and uh, the outdoor theater. And let's just use the drone, fly up and take a look. There's the outdoor theater with the projection booth. Feeling kind of hungry, so let's just go over to the Sky Raider Inn, Chow Hall. You can see the SP which is up on top of the hill up there, AFTN, tennis courts, and we'll look back towards the chapel and the O Club. And we'll zoom up the hill to the O Club, take a look around. And way off out in the distance you see Camp Tarbox. There's the trailers, there's the O Club. Chow Hall, the outdoor theater, you can see the tower out in the distance, and finish up with Invert. So you've seen a lot of stuff crammed into a small area, 
and you may have noticed that the uh, perimeter is clean and clear of vegetation. And this was because of application of herbicides uh, around the perimeter. The government created several Project Chico Southeast Asia reports. Chico stands for Contemporary Historical Examination of Current Operations. The Chico report that deals with herbicides in bases in Thailand is called the Base Defense in Thailand and it was created in 18 February 73. And it looks like it was declassified in September of 1999. The report was 88 pages long, but I've just put page 58 and 69 here that list using herbicides. This document addresses the 500 meter air drift zone as defined by the Department of Army. But it just shows the flight line. It doesn't show an accurate depiction of drift zones around the rest of the base. Well, 500 meters is 1,641 feet. I've shaded the 500 meter drift zone from the edge of the perimeter around the base. And you can see if you ever went to the post office, the gym, or lived in any of those hooches, you were well within the drift zone. And the rest of the base was cross-contaminated by security policemen who uh, were in the bunkers uh, and would go to the chow hall, or go to uh, USO or places like that before they went home and, and changed the uniforms. Uh, trucks <clears throat> that drove through the sprayed areas, drove around the base on the roads, and uh, even the ditch system. In the monsoon season, it would rain and the ditches would overflow and it would carry the particulates underneath the hooches and anywhere that the, uh, that the rain flowed. I am by no means a scientist, but looking at this, it looks like this stuff hangs around for a long time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little trip down memory lane in KP Thailand. And I'll continue working on this, get the uh, flight line, the bomb dump, uh, everything that's on the east side and the north side of the base. And if you have any suggestions or requests, uh, please uh, email them to me and I'll see if I can get that taken care of for you. My name is Russ Keys. I was an Airman First Class in the Phnom, Thailand in 1974 through 75. Thank you.